Well, how y'all doing today? Lord have mercy, we've talked about all kinds of stuff. Like we was gonna build us a shed this spring. And the one thing we didn't touch on was lighting or electricity. So I thought maybe I'd touch on that just a little bit for you. I don't wanna tell you all about every step there is to wiring, I, but there's a couple of things I do wanna point out to you and hopefully it'll click for you and make a little bit of sense when the time comes that you are wiring up your building. Uh, uh, but before I get into that, I gotta tell y'all what happened to me yesterday. I was uh, taking a cab up to the Nashville airport and it's about, well, it's an hour and 15 minute drive from my house. And uh, I just just did not feel like driving. I'm, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to go into details why I can't drive long distances. But anyway, I paid a, uh, I paid a, like a limo service, whatever, to drive me up to uh, the airport in Nashville to pick up a relative. And uh, uh, on my way up there, uh, I reached up, tapped a tap the driver on the shoulder one talk to him and he just freaks out I mean he starts swerving he almost hit a daggum tractor trailer on the interstate he jumps a daggum curb you know one of them, one of them silver things alongside the road to keep you keep you on the road he jumped one of them we end up going down an embankment across a side street and stop just shy of running right through a plate glass window of a business. Well, we both sat there for a minute or so, didn't say a damn word. We both kind of shook up. That old boy, he was still shaking. And I weren't none too happy myself. And I told him, I said, sir, I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. I am. Uh, I didn't know tapping a man on the shoulder would freak him out so bad. Uh, I am so sorry. He said, no, it's completely my fault. I said, how do you figure it's your fault? I'm the one that tapped you on the shoulder. He said, well, today is my first day to do like cab service. He says, the past 25 years I've driven a hearse. That's a that's a joke, you know, like a funny one, only different. Oh, uh, anyway, I imagine after me driving a hearse for 25 years, my pastor tapped me on the shoulder, I'd be a little bit shook up too. Anyway, let, let's talk about wiring. Okay, the one thing that people have trouble understanding, and the one thing that must be done correctly or it will give people problems down the road. Because people down the road are going to assume, and that's that word again, you know, but they're going to assume that you wired this correctly when they're up there in the ceiling, in the ceiling box, all right? And that one thing that's, that's, that is hard for people to grasp the idea of is wiring a switch, just a regular switch on the wall. Okay, and let me tell you why people have trouble with that. In residential wiring, we're talking about 120 volts. I'm not going to confuse you today by getting into 240 volts. But in 120 volts, we normally use what's called Romex. In a 14-2 with ground, that means 14 gauge, two conductors plus a ground, 14-2 with ground, or 12 2 with ground, 12 gauge wire, two conductors, one ground. And normally they have black, white, and bare. Black, white, black insulation, white insulation, and a bare copper wire for ground. All right? Let me take you from the power panel on out so you can sort of get an idea, get the feel of what's going on here. Imagine. I'm not going to I'm not going to get in a lot of detail in your power panel because it'd be best if I had one to show you. 
but in your power panel you're going to have a circuit breaker you're going to have a bunch of them but we're, not, we're only concerned about this one right here and it's going to be a single they make doubles but this is going to be a single and, and this single breaker is going to snap into position and it's got a little slot on the back, little conductors and there's a little like a knife edge in the power panel and this thing's going to snap and grip that little knife edge which is where it's getting its electricity because your big wires are coming in and they're connecting and anyway there's going to be a screw right out here And I don't want to hear nothing from y'all people about, oh, it's going to be in a shed and it's got to be a ground fault interrupter and all that. We're not going to get into that. Anyway, there's going to be a screw right here under that, under that uh, circuit breaker. And you're going to loosen that screw. You're going to strip back the insulation of that black, of the black wire. And you're going to put it under that screw right there. And then that white wire, you're gonna you're gonna have the uh, there'll be a grounding bar. It might be down this side, might be along the bottom, it might be down that side, might be all all over the place. But your white wire is gonna go to a grounding bar. So we're gonna have black right here. And a white wire. It's going to go to a grounding bar and your bare copper wire also goes to a grounding bar. But when they inspect, if, if they were to be inspected, they'd want to see that all your bare grounds are over here by their self on a grounding bar and the whites are over here and it's just because. Because you could put your uh, ground out by that white one. It wouldn't matter. But for the sake of argument, let's pretend that there's another grounding bar here and we're going to put our bare, our bare copper, our ground. Now, it don't come out of the box like that. You've actually got a, a hole and a Romex connector and your piece of Romex is going in there and you strip the insulation back to where it's right about here and then your three wires go where they need to in the box in a nice neat manner but just for the sake of drawing for the sake of explaining now you notice the black wire is on the breaker your black wire is hot that's the wire that's carrying your electricity. Now, I do realize that this is 60 hertz, it's alternating current, and the electricity does this stuff back forth, back forth. But white is connected to ground. Black, you reach up that power pad, uh, up in that ceiling box, you touch a bare black wire, it's gonna knock the shit out of you. Touch white one, it won't. But don't take my word for it and don't try it just because you don't know how somebody wired, okay? Anyway, normally what a person will do is they will run this piece of Romex up in the ceiling to a box in the ceiling where they're gonna put their light. And then they'll run wires out of that and drop down in the walls, okay? for uh, outlets if you're going to have it on this one breaker. So let's do that. We're going we're going to say this is our this is our ceiling box. This is where our light's going to be, okay? And we're going to come in here with black, white, and ground. Black, white, and ground. Black ties to black. White ties to white, ground ties to ground, okay? Now you've got you an outlet down here. You've got you a 120 volt outlet. And it's got 
a wire run to it, and it's got black, white, and ground. Now let's see if you can remember this. This is how my daddy taught me when I was seven year old. White on bright, black on brass, green on ground. White on bright, black on brass, green on ground. Look at your receptacle, you know, before you try to wire it up. And you'll notice that the, that the, uh, See which one is which. So let me look at it a minute. Uh, I think it is. Anyway, you'll notice, anyway, whichever one it is, the bigger slot is your neutral, is your, it's your white. And on that side of your outlet, or receptacle rather, you should see silver, silver screws. And on the other side, you should see brass colored screws. White on bright, black on brass, green on ground. So you wire up that out. And that black wire comes up here, and that white wire comes up here, and that that uh, bare ground wire comes up here. Okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that off now, and we're gonna pretend that we're all up here in the box now. Black is going to tie to black. And white is going to tie to white. And bare ground is going to tie to bare ground. Black, white, and ground. Black to black, white to white, ground to ground. But we want to put in a switch because we want to have a light up here. And if you look at a typical uh, light receptacle let's say uh, <clears throat> I don't have one here handy but you'll if you buy one of them little cheap ceiling lights it's got the little round globe thing anyway on the back of it you'll see there's this bare ground wire and there's a white and a black wire How about that you're going to have a white and a black wire on your light fixture now over here is my switch. Oh, damn, I hate them damn telemarketers. You hello? This is an important message regarding your current credit card account. We have made several attempts to reach you. This is your final courtesy call before we are unable to lower your credit card interest rate. Press 1 to speak to the member services department, or press 2 and your eligibility to lower your rate will expire. Please hold while I try that extension. I hate these so bitches. Thank you for responding card services. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing fine, thank you for asking. And are you responding to lower down the interest rate of your credit card? Yes. Great. Now for the qualification purpose, how much do you owe on your credit card? Give me a rough guess. Oh, uh, I don't owe nothing on it. I, I, my, uh, my lawyer, he, he took it to bankruptcy court. And he said that really? anybody that wants to give me credit, just tell them to give him a call. Do you help people be bankrupt? You want to file a bankruptcy? Oh, I already have. Already have, okay. Yeah, can and you can you help case, me? That in that case, you know, nothing can happen. You already filed bankruptcy. Oh, can, 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 handle the case. can you fondle my testicles? No, no, only court can handle your case now. Can, can, to us. can you fondle my testicles? No, no, court will do it for you. Oh, you can't, you, you, you can't, judge. You, you can't fondle my testicles for me? I would like that. No, no, court, go to the judge and ask him to do it for you, okay? Hey, have you got a woman there that might do it? You will remember. 
If you got a woman there that might do it, I like talking to you. I, I bet you got soft hands. Of course, I have a woman here who can do it for you. That's your sister. Oh, my sister. Oh, I don't have yes. a sister. She died. No, no. Uh, that's your your wife, maybe. Uh, she yeah, died. She wife. she died too. That's why I had to go bankrupt. Oh. So you know, I ain't got nobody playing my testicles. I, I thought I thought maybe you would. And, and you see, I've got your phone number, and I'm tape recording and video recording this. So guess what? You're in a shitload of trouble. I want to recording this. I am. Yeah. I am recording I it. Recording. It's also. Put, uh, <laughs> put some more spice on your recording. All right. You know this guy. This guy here is a complete douchebag. <laughs> Hear this. <laughs> and I want you to put this on YouTube, okay? I am putting it on YouTube. This video. I am putting it on YouTube. Okay. And, okay. and you can watch it on my channel. My channel is called Doing It Cheap. Okay, I will look into the channel. Please tell me one more time. What is the channel? I will subscribe as well. Doing It Cheap. Doing It Cheap. Yep. Okay. All and one word. Do, one doing It Cheap. Thing. And, and you're going to be on the video where I'm talking about wire, uh, how to wire uh, electric electricity in a shed. Doing it cheap. Okay. Uh huh. How to wire a shed. Electricity. Uh huh. To a shed. Shed. Okay. So you only make shed videos, huh? Yeah. And and and, and 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 you're lucky enough. You're talking to Paw Paw. That's that's who I go by. I'm Paul Paul. I'm doing it cheap. You do it cheap, okay. You are a cheap person, maybe, huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> bye bye. Damn <laughs> <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> oh. I wonder if I can get that guy in trouble. Knowing what that last number was that come in here. Hmm. Let's see, I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm gonna tell everybody what that number was that I just got if I can pull it up. Call log. Calls. That number, if y'all wanna have fun with them, that number is 704 998 4877. 704 998 4877. Them sons of bitches. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. I hate them bastards. Right in the middle trying to do something. They call and interrupt you. Shit. Anyway, <laughs> we were back here at the switch. Now, when you look at a switch, the screws on the side of the switch are the same color because uh, they're going to have power going to them when the switch is on. They're both going to be hot. So, the, the, here, is, here is what changes when you're wiring a switch. Matter of fact, if I had a different color marker, it would help. Hold on just a bit. Oh, heck, I don't know where they are. Eh, hey, well. Anyway, when you're on a ladder and you're looking up here in the ceiling and you're looking at that wiring up there, you expect black wires to be hot and white wires to be neutral, okay? That's what you expect. When we wire a switch, use that same Romex, we got that black wire, we got that white wire, we got that ground wire. But when I go to put that light fixture up, I want that light fixture controlled by that switch, okay? And when that switch is turned on, there should be a black wire 
that gets hot. When I say hot, I mean is energized. There's electricity on a black wire for my black wire for my light fixture when I turn the switch on. All right. And when I tie, tie my white wire in and my ground wire in, they're supposed to be on neutral. Well, the way we accomplish this, the way National Electric Code or whatever decided that we could get by by get by with using Romex without having to buy special wire, is they said, "Here's what we'll here's what we'll let you do. You got your black wires tied together right here, and." You might have five or six receptacles. You might have five or six wires tied together under a big wire nut. You know, they're, they're all black. Well, on my switch, I'm going to tie my white wire to my black. This is the only time in your entire house you will see a black wire tied to a white wire. It's for what's called a switch leg. So when I tie my white wire to the black and I turn my switch on, all of a sudden my black wire now is hot. Okay? So my white wire comes in here and ties to black. My black wire is just hanging out. It's cool, man. We're all good. And my ground wire is tied to ground. And what do I have left? Well, I've got white that I haven't touched, and I've got my black wire from my switch. So you take your light fixture and you tie the white wire on your light fixture to your white wires. And you tie your black wire from your light fixture to this black wire from the switch, okay? And then when you turn your switch on and off, this black wire will energize and de-energize, be hot and off, on and off, because your white wire came in here and tied to the black. I hope I, hope I was able to illustrate that to you where you understand it. It's, uh, you may have to watch it a time or two because it's a strange concept to grasp. I hope I explained it well enough. But like I said, this is the only time you're ever going to see a white wire tied to a black. And this also helps a person if they're up there looking, helps them identify the switch leg because they can take that wire and they say, okay, there's a white one and it goes right here. And right here in the same insulation, is this black wire. Okay, so I take my white wire, here's my black wire, and I can pull it out of the ceiling box if I want to, you know, because I'm able to identify it. But regardless, that is how you wire a switch. So then I come in here with my, with my pretty light, and I tie black to black, and I tie white to white, and I tie ground to ground if there is one. And we're done. Okay. Well, I hope that helped you. I uh, hope that was about clear as mud. I could draw a nice, neat diagram, I guess. But uh, hopefully by me talking to you as I was doing it, it made sense. I guess in the closing credits, I'll show a, I'll show a better drawing of it. For those of you that have that have left such nice words and care so much about my dogs. I want you to know I really appreciate y'all. It means more than you'll ever know. A lot of you, you know, left words of condolences, and uh, that's because you couldn't get through the whole video. I understand, but uh, at three o'clock in the afternoon, I had called the vet, and I said this in the video. I called the vet. And I said I just can't go through with it. So that's why on the last video you saw me in the floor playing with the dogs. I want you to know they're doing good. I also want to report right quick uh, uh, that after, now today is Thursday and Saturday will be three weeks I've been on my diet. 
And as of, and as of this morning, I'd lost 15 pounds. Now, you don't think 15 pounds is much when you're just looking at numbers on a scale. But you pick up a 15 pound barbell and you hold it there and you start saying, damn, that is significant. So I'm down 15 pounds in less than three weeks. And, uh, you know, you grab something and, and, you know, if you say, well, this one guy only lost five pounds, <coughs> get you a five pound bag of sugar and feel how heavy that damn thing is. <coughs> so, if I'm sta standing here with this 15 pounds and all of a sudden I realize I'm not having to carry that any longer. Well, that's 15 pounds. The joints and back and butt and knees and ankles ain't having to support. So, I'm getting a little bit excited. The diet's working. Uh, anyway, my God, what a rambling conversation this has been. Well, y'all have a y'all have a wonderful day and a better tomorrow. Bye.